Europe's remote lost in time analysis. Life in Tarnava Mare has barely changed in centuries, offering a precious insight into the age-old traditions that are still going strong in its Saxon villages. I heard them before I saw them, the soft jangle of metal bells carrying on the warm evening air. Weary hooves scuffed up clouds of dust as the herd trudged up this crazy dirt road high street, stopping to gulp water from a trough beneath, tro from a trough beneath a gnarled walnut tree. Routine kicked in and they peeled away through arched gateways and into their own cobbled courtyards where they'd be milked and fed for the night. This was the evening procession of cows when residents gather outside their pastel-colored Saxon homes to watch the herders return from pasture, a daily ritual that's been signaling the end of the working day in this creek. Crete, Beer Town, and the other medieval villages of southeastern Transylvania's Tarnava Mare region for hundreds of years. Occupying a rural triangle in central Romania between the historical cities of Sig. Hisuara, Brasov, and Sibiu, Taranarva Mare is one of Europe's most intriguing, intriguing central landscapes and cultural landscapes. The region was settled in the 12th century by Saxons from what are now, what are now parts of Germany, France, Belgium. Luxembourg and the Netherlands, invited here by King Geza II of Hungary under the auspices of establishing their own economy, but with the real objective of defending the far reaches of his kingdom from raiding troops. They colonized a river of fertile land just north of the Carpathian mountains, built fortified churches for centuries in times of seas, and formed robust small-scale farming communities. The Saxons prospered for more than 800 years but having survived World War II, when many were conscripted to fight in the, in the German army, and the years just after, when even more were deported by the Soviets to work in civilian labor camps, they virtually disappeared from Transylvania during the final decades of the 20th century under Romania's communist dictator Nicole Ceausescu. Many emigrated to Germany and following the fall of the region in 1989, almost half a million more opted sticks for Western Europe. <laughs> Today just 10 Saxons live in this creek, out of a population of less than 500, and there aren't that many more in Messendorf, Crete, 
for the other surrounding villages. But their churches and their houses remain. And the area has a fascinating, barely changed in centuries feel tree. Horse drawn carts are the main method of transport and the residents act out a sustainable existence from small holdings or shop holding. The architecture of the houses, the traditions, and the villagers' connection to nature has remained locked in time, said Ursula Radu Bernolende, who was born and raised in this creek and is now project manager at the Mihai Eminescu Trust and Niti, a foundation dedicated to preserving the heritage of Trans Transylvania's villages. It is an almost ancient way of living, and it offers visitors a glimpse into a world that no longer exists in other parts of the globe. I'd come to Tarabunarva Male for exactly that reason, basing myself in an old Saxon guest house on Biscris Main Street, an attractive cornflower blue building with high walls and a gateway large enough to allow a loaded hay cart through. The house once belonged to the wealthiest family in the village, but was on the verge of falling down when Emmett stepped in. It's one of 20 or so traditional guest houses in Tarnaba Marley that the foundation has restored, employing local craftsmen and using original techniques and materials like yellow crane, slaked lime, handmade bricks, pine and oak as a way of showing local residents that their heritage can be a source of growth for the community. <coughs> the guest houses are operated by Experience Transylvania, MIT's social business side arm, and the house I was staying in was decorated with objects that were once used by the villagers themselves, such as tall Saxon trundle beds that slide open like a chest of drawers and a terracotta called heater. It was sparse but comfortable and an appropriate base from which to explore the region. This Chris main attraction is uh, its fortified church, which gives the village its German, Deutsch, Webkirch, Wave, Wave, Wave or German White Church, and uh, Hungarian or Saxon White Church names. One of seven fortified churches in Tarnaba Mare that have been inscribed on UNESCO's World Heritage List. It was built in the 12th century, fortified in the 50th, 15th, and then further strengthened, strengthened over the next 200 years with an outer wall and defensive towers. Storerooms were fashioned out of the thick walls, and when this creek was under attack, its villagers would retreat with their livestock into the church and sit out the city. The rest of the time, the rooms were used to keep dried hands and bacon fat. The church's so-called large tower was opened every Sunday so that each household could take a single piece of fat or to rest them a week, a tradition 
that only ended in the early 1990s. On the rainways running down from the church and in the surrounding streets, I came across little stalls outside some of the houses, each one draped with woolen socks and gloves and colorful slippers. The fruits of an initi initiative that helps local women earn an income. Christina Basilche, who has been making two pairs of slippers a day for the last 10 years, showed me the process scrubbing each alternate layer of wool and linen mesh with soap and water until the supple shoes took shape. It's just one of several such enterprises, the Prince of Wales, who has a house in Biscay and has been a regular visitor to Transylvania for more than 25 years, has set up a training center at the bottom of the village that provides apprenticeships for locals in the preservation of art at architectural heritage and the traditional handicrafts. MNT too has helped several of the region's weavers, carpenters, and blacksmiths launch their own businesses in recent years and were instrumental in re establishing the lost art of bullying and tile making in this creek. Part of a wider renewal of ancient crafts and trades across Turnover Marley. One of the most interesting of these artisans is Marinel Giorgi, who has revived the traditional such cheese blue pottery in the Saxon village of the same name, 20 km north of this creek. In a workshop at his atelier, there, the ceramica and such cheese at the end of a narrow lane opposite the village's towering fortified church. I watched him pound and deftly spin the clay into pots and plates that were then placed with a rich cobalt blue. He scratched the motifs into the place rather than painting them on a sigraffito technique that the previous portal of Sassis used before him in the late 18th century. What Marinel makes depends on depends on the weight of the clay and how he's feeling on the day. Making a pot is about the journey rather than the destination. He told me it is all about the emotions you feel along the way. The sun's cheese like this tree and all the other villages in Taranaba Marae has remained relatively unchanged since the Saxons first settled here. It con consists of two parallel rows of pastel shoot houses built in a line on either side of a stream. The villages were originally organized into different neighborhoods or Nakubarschaften, supportive communities who worked together to carry out communal tasks, a practice that continues today. Livestock owners, for example, are still required to spend a certain amount of time, depending on how many cattle or sheep they own, clearing the pastures and the meadows of scrub. It was a, a creaking ride by horse and cut off to the scrub cleared pastures 
between Biscri and Crete. Review Damia. The man chosen to look after the village flock this season was spending the entire summer at the ship fold here. His only company, a couple of local shepherds, and the fierce sheep dogs that mostly keep their wolves and bears at bay. His temporary home was a bare flooded, flooded shack where he cooks, eats, sleeps, and in the room next door makes cheeses using a using an assortment of wooden troughs and trays. There were about 180 sheep under his watch, which his shepherds milked by hand each evening. Most households own between 10 and 20 sheep, and they all receive a few kilograms of cheese from Damia each week. <coughs> he thumped a slab of cast, a giant spongy loaf of squeaky white cheese onto the table in front of me. It was so fresh, it tasted slightly acidic. Next came a better like telemia, then a branza de bolduf strong, salty, and with a texture that looked like cake mix is kept in the soon of stomach of a ship or wrapped in pine bark for a resinous flavor. I tried them all, watched the shepherds corral their sheep and milk them, and then climbed onto the cart for the rushing ride down the hills. In the half-light, I wanted to get back to this creek in time to see the cows come home. <coughs>